Super Heavy Booster 12 has just completed its dynamic static fire testing, marking a crucial milestone in its journey toward Flight 5. Ship 30 tile upgrade works are nearly finished, and the next generation Starship vehicle is taking shape at the build site. An upgraded launch mount hardware has been spotted, and Tower 2 construction hit a major milestone this past week. And in a bold move, SpaceX is eyeing a headquarters shift to Starbase from California. Let's delve into these latest developments and more. Super Heavy Booster 12 has successfully completed its static fire testing and has begun the final round of preparations for Flight 5. The test campaign for Booster 12 started with a partial propellant load test on July 11, followed by a 33-engine spin prime test on July 12. This test involved allowing propellants to flow through the engines to validate the plumbing and engine spin-up procedures without ignition. Following these tests, the booster was prepared for static fire testing. Propellant loading into the vehicle began on Monday morning, and within 30 minutes, the booster was fueled to the required level. Next, the Raptor engine chill-down process commenced to precondition the engines to the correct temperature for ignition. The water deluge system was activated, followed by the ignition of all 33 Raptor engines for roughly 8 seconds. This full-duration static fire test ensures that the booster's plumbing, valves, ignition systems, and engines are functioning correctly before the actual launch. Booster 12 was removed from the launch mount the next day morning and was transported back to the build site for final preparations ahead of the wet dress rehearsal. The booster is currently inside the mega bay, where the team will conduct a thorough inspection of the vehicle's plumbing and electrical systems and install the hot stage ring. Meanwhile, Ship 30's heat tile upgrade works are nearing completion inside the high bay. The tank section tile work was completed a week ago, and the flaps received new, stronger tiles in the past week. Only the nose cone tip and a few other areas remain to be tiled. After completing the tile work and before preparing for the full stack wet dress rehearsal, Ship 30 will need to conduct static fire testing due to an engine replacement last month. The successful completion of the wet dress rehearsal will pave the way for the fifth integrated flight test. Elon Musk recently updated that they are targeting the first week of August for Flight 5 liftoff. However, SpaceX is yet to receive a modified launch license from the FAA, which will also include permission to attempt the booster catch with the tower arms. SpaceX has begun stacking the next-generation Starship V2 prototype at the build site. The nose cone of the ship was the first to be moved into the high bay from the Star Factory. This nose cone features several design upgrades, including the flap reposition that Elon Musk previously mentioned. The forward flaps are now moved more leeward and further forward in order to improve the moment arm. The flaps are smaller compared to the V1 ships, and the hinge points were redesigned and repositioned to avoid damage from the plasma generated during re-entry. This redesign addresses the hinge and flap failure issues observed in Flight 4. According to Musk, the flap redesign is a significant improvement for Starship. In addition to the flap design change, the V2 ship nose cone features more heat tiles on the leeward side and an extra vent on the tip. The gases expelled through this vent will help control the attitude of the ship during flight, giving more control over the ship's orientation. The nose cone transport stand label reveals that the first V2 ship prototype is designated Ship 33, the successor to Ship 32, the last V1 ship. After the nose cone was moved into the high bay, the payload bay section of the V2 ship emerged from the Star Factory. This is the section that stores Starlink satellites and releases them into space once the Starship achieves orbit. A noticeable change to the Starship V2 payload bay from the first generation is the inclusion of ship lift points. The ship lift points are the two receptacles on either side of the ship to which the lifting jig will be connected in order to lift the ship to a test stand or a transporter. In the Starship V1 prototypes, the lift points were located just below the forward flaps. The shift in location might be because SpaceX found that having lift points below the flaps often led to cracked heat tiles. After entering the high bay, the payload bay and the nose cone were joined together, as seen from the reflection on the Star Factory glass window. The tank sections of Ship 33 can be expected to come out of the Star Factory and move into the high bay in the coming days for stacking. Besides the nose cone redesign, the next-generation Starship prototypes feature many more design improvements, which were discussed in detail in my previous videos. Please check out those videos to learn more about Starship V2 and the future V3 variants. Links are in the description. The second launch tower construction is swiftly progressing at the launch site. The second section of the tower was stacked atop the first section last Tuesday morning. It was then secured with heavy-duty nuts and bolts, welding, and other structural fastening equipment. The third section was rolled out to the launch site on Wednesday morning and was stacked atop the second section on Thursday morning. 
The remaining sections of the tower are being prepared at the Sanchez site for rollout to the launch site in the coming days. Meanwhile, the final two tower sections and the tower arms, which were delivered to the port of Brownsville from Kennedy Space Center last month, have arrived at Starbase over the past week. Currently, the arm carriage, the only piece yet to be transported, is being readied at the port for its journey to Starbase. According to an FAA document, SpaceX aims to complete the stacking of Tower 2 by mid-August. Subsequently, installation of the tower arms, ship quick disconnect mechanism, and other critical components will follow. The second launch pad construction is also progressing parallel to the Tower 2 construction. SpaceX engineers are planning to construct a flame wrench for Pad 2 instead of using a water-cooled flame deflector. Please check out my previous video to learn why SpaceX made this decision, the link is in the description. During a recent flyover of the SpaceX McGregor test facility, NASA spaceflight teams observed what appears to be a redesigned booster hold-down clamp for the orbital launch mount. The launch mount features 20 hold-down clamps, which provide a stable and secure anchoring mechanism for the booster during the initial stages of launch preparation until liftoff. They are also responsible for holding the booster firmly on the launch mount during static fire testing. The new hold-down clamp design shows significant differences from the existing ones, especially in terms of its retraction profile. These changes are expected to provide more secure and stable anchoring during pre-launch preparations and static fire tests. Additionally, they are expected to retract more swiftly from the lifting rocket, offering improvements over the current clamps. These new clamps might be integrated into the launch mount of Pad 2. Confirmation of this can only be made once images of the orbital launch mount for Pad 2 are publicly available. Elon Musk recently announced plans to move the headquarters of SpaceX and social media platform X to Texas from California. He cited a new California law signed by Governor Gavin Newsom that bars school districts from requiring staff to notify parents of their child's gender identity change as the final straw that is forcing the move. SpaceX's main office will move to Starbase, while X will relocate to Austin. I think this move will provide significant benefits for the Starship program. The close proximity to the Starship launch site will enable tighter integration of engineering, manufacturing, and launch operations. Streamlined logistics and access to a larger talent pool in Texas will also boost efficiency and progress on Starship development. How do you think SpaceX's move to Texas will benefit the Starship program? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. On June 26, NASA awarded SpaceX a contract worth up to $843 million to develop the U.S. deorbit vehicle that will safely deorbit the International Space Station at the end of its operational life in 2030. The deorbit vehicle's mission involves docking with the ISS and executing the final maneuvers required for a controlled re-entry of the station into a remote ocean region, such as the South Pacific. Both the ISS and the deorbit vehicle are expected to break apart destructively during this re-entry process. On July 17, just three weeks after the contract announcement, SpaceX and NASA officials unveiled the design and technical details of the deorbit vehicle. The vehicle will be a modified version of SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft, which has been delivering cargo to the ISS since 2012 and transporting astronauts since 2020. Key upgrades include an enhanced trunk section with additional propellant tanks, engines, avionics, and power generation systems to handle the complex deorbit mission. The resulting vehicle will be about twice as long as a regular Dragon ship, with six times as much propellant to produce four times the power. The ISS, measuring 109 meters in width and 73 meters in length, has a total pressurized volume of 1,005 cubic meters and a mass of approximately 450,000 kilograms. It orbits the Earth at an average speed of 27,500 kilometers per hour. To carefully lower its altitude for a controlled re-entry, the deorbit vehicle will carry 16,000 kilograms of propellant to power 46 Draco rocket engines, 30 of which will be mounted in an extended trunk section to perform most of the deorbit maneuvers. The Draco engines are small hypergolic liquid rocket engine thrusters that provide 400 newtons of thrust each. SpaceX Dragon capsule is equipped with 12 to 18 of these Draco thrusters, which are used for on-orbit maneuvering, deorbit and re-entry maneuvers. The deorbit vehicle would be launched a year and a half before the station's planned end of operations, with astronauts still aboard as the station's altitude is gradually lowered. Six months prior to the station's destruction, the crew will abandon the ship and return to Earth. Once the ISS is reduced to about 220 kilometers in altitude, the Dragon will bring it down four days later. 
During this high-speed descent, more massive components, such as modules in the lab's power truss, will break apart, while smaller pieces are expected to survive the fall and reach the ocean splashdown. Although SpaceX will handle the development of the deorbit vehicle, NASA will assume ownership once the vehicle is completed and will oversee its mission operations. Operational since 1998, the ISS serves as a unique scientific platform where astronauts perform experiments across multiple research disciplines. However, the station's aging infrastructure and escalating maintenance costs present growing challenges for continued operation. Moreover, NASA currently aims to redirect its resources towards deep space exploration, including missions to the Moon and Mars. The agency also supports the creation of commercially owned and operated space stations in low Earth orbit, which will eventually take over the research and operational roles currently filled by the ISS. The deorbit initiative will involve collaborative efforts from the five space agencies that have been part of the ISS since its inception in 1998. SpaceX has taken a significant step towards receiving FAA approval for Falcon 9's return to flight following the anomaly on July 11. During that mission, designated Starlink Group 93, the Falcon 9 upper stage experienced an anomaly caused by a liquid oxygen leakage, leading to an unusual buildup of ice on the engine cover. Consequently, the upper stage engine restart, intended to raise the perigee, failed and led to engine destruction. Although the Starlink satellites were successfully deployed, they are now in a high drag region of the upper atmosphere and are projected to re-enter and disintegrate. Following the mishap, the FAA issued a statement indicating that they have initiated an investigation led by SpaceX and Falcon 9 has been grounded. The FAA has two means of allowing a rocket to return to flight operations following a mishap. First, the operator completes a mishap investigation report, identifies corrective actions, implements them, and submits the report to the FAA. If accepted, the investigation is closed and the operator can resume flights. Alternatively, the operator can request the FAA to make a public safety determination to confirm that the mishap did not involve safety-critical systems, allowing a return to flight operations while the investigation remains open, provided all licensing requirements are met. On July 15, the FAA revealed that SpaceX has submitted a request to go with the second option, involving a public safety determination, while the ongoing internal investigation progresses. The FAA is currently reviewing this request. If the agency finds no public safety issues were involved, SpaceX may resume flights while the mishap investigation continues. This is a positive sign for the future of Falcon 9 missions, suggesting that a favorable determination could mean a quick return to flight, ensuring the continuation of upcoming missions. However, if the FAA identifies public safety issues, it could result in further delays and require additional corrective actions from SpaceX, impacting the launch schedule. The suspension of Falcon 9 launches has already caused delays for several missions planned for this month, including multiple Starlink flights, the launch of Norwegian communications satellites, and a transporter small satellite rideshare mission. The timing of the Polaris Dawn private astronaut mission and NASA's Crew 9 mission to the International Space Station also hinges on the FAA's report. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.